Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the daily news editorial. Today uh, I have taken an article or the editorial from the Indian Express and we will be covering the following topics that is data breach, uh, what is data protection bill 2022, what is digital public infrastructure and a proposed national cyber security strategy. So this particular uh, article will help you in your GS3 internal security and with respect to prelims uh, there are few things that you might want to keep in mind. So let us get started. So this article is basically about the recent data breach that happened on the Coven platform and uh, the ongoing controversies about why cer cer uh, certain data breaches are happening over and over again. So before starting, what exactly is data breach? <coughs> data breach refers to an unauthorized access, disclosure or acquisition of sensitive or confidential information from an organization's computer systems or networks. So, it occurs when information that is meant to be secure is accessed by individuals, groups or entities without proper authorization. Now, what happens when data breach occurs? It can result in exposure of various types of data including personal information what happened in the case of this uh, Coven platform data breach. Mm, the Aadhaar, PAN, passport, voter ID and mobile number these kind of details were exposed. So <coughs> uh, many more uh, personal information like financial records, login credentials, intellectual property or any other sensitive data held by an organization. So the breach can occur due to various factors. It could be hacking, uh, it could be malware or ransomware infections, physical theft of devices or storage media, uh, accidental disclosure or internal mishandling of data. Now the consequences could be it can lead to financial losses, reputational damage for the organization, legal and regulatory consequences and potential harm to the individuals whose data has been compromised. So to prevent data breaches, organizations typically uh, what do they do? They implement security measures such as strong access controls, encryption, uh, regular security audits, employee training and the adoption of best practices in data protection. However, uh, as uh, technology evolves, uh, so do the methods used by cyber criminals, right? So as, uh, as we enhance our data protection methods, cyber criminals also enhance their way of attacking, making data breaches an ongoing challenge for organizations across various sectors. Now why exactly is India facing multiple data breaches? In the last few years India has, India has faced so many data breaches, right? So what is the reason behind it? First one is rapid digital transformation. India has witnessed significant growth in uh, its digital landscape. Now with increasing uh, internet penetration, smartphone adoption and digital services, uh, this has expanded the attack surface for cyber criminals providing more opportunities for data breaches. Next one is large population and expanding digital footprint. So India has a large population making it an attractive target for cyber criminals seeking to access a vast amount of personal and financial data. So as more Indians uh, engage in online activities such as e-commerce, banking and social media, the potential for data breaches also 
increase. Next one is inadequate cyber security measures. This is something India is lacking, cyber security measures. Some organizations in India may have uh, inadequate cyber security practices and infrastructure be because of which they are more vulnerable to cyber attacks, right? So, weak security controls, lack of uh, employee awareness and training, um, also outdated technology can contribute to data breach incidents. For example, the AIMS, I mean uh, AIMS was attacked or ransom had faced a ransomware attack recently. Why? Because it's uh, technology was not updated. Next one is sophisticated cyber criminal tactics. Criminals uh, are continually evolving their tactics to exploit vulnerabilities and gain unauthorized access to data. So, techniques such as phishing, um, malware attacks, ransomware and social engineering are commonly used to target individuals and organizations in India. Next is insider threats. So, data breaches can also occur due to insider threats where what happens in insider threats? Employees or individuals within organizations misuse or leak sensitive data intentionally or unintentionally. So, ins insufficient access controls, lack of data governance or inadequate employee monitoring can contribute to insider related breaches. Next is cross border data flows India's digital ecosystem involves the cross border transfer of data which can present challenges in terms of data protection and privacy so the global nature of uh, cyber threats means that data breaches can occur from both domestic and international sources. The last one is regulatory and enforcement challenges. So, uh, while uh, India has been working on data protection regulations, um, comprehensive legislation like the personal uh, data protection bill or the um, data protection bill 2022 are still not finalized. So, the absence of a robust legal frame framework and challenges in, in enforcement can make it very difficult to prevent and address data breaches uh, effectively. So, it is very important to note that uh, addressing these issues of data breaches require a uh, holistic approach involving technological, organizational and regulatory measures, right. So, um, the Indian government has uh, done a certain or uh, implemented a certain uh, initiatives or programs in place to address the uh, issue of cyber security, but overall in order to protect data of individuals, the bills are still pending to be finalized. Now, uh, what exactly is the role of certain that is computer emergency response team in handling these kind of data breaches or some cyber security attacks? So, before going into the role, we must know that CERTIN operates under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and it serves as the National Nodal Agency for Cyber Security Incident Response. 
Now, the key roles of certain uh, in cases of data breaches include first one is incident response coordination. So, certain serves as the central point of contact for reporting and responding to cyber security incidences including data breaches. Next one is incident analysis and mitigation. So, certain analyzes reported incidents and investigates their nature and impact and um, thereafter provides uh, guidance recommendations to affected organizations on mitigation strategies. Next is threat intelligence sharing. So, certain collects, analyzes and shares threat intelligence related to cyber security incidents including data breaches. Now, it collaborates with other uh, certs, uh, security organizations and industry partners to exchange information on these kind of emerging threats, vulnerabilities and also focuses on best practices for better preparedness and prevention. Next one is Cyber security advisories and alerts. So, certain uh, issues, timely advisories and alerts to raise awareness about emerging threats, vulnerabilities, and recommended countermeasures. Next one is capacity building and training. So, it conducts training programs, workshops and awareness campaigns to enhance the cyber security capabilities of government agencies, law enforcement and other stakeholders. The last one is collaboration and partnerships. So, uh, certain also collaborates with various national and international organizations, industry associations and academia to foster partnerships and also uh, share expertise in cyber security incident uh, response. So, these, this collaboration uh, strengthens the overall cyber security ecosystem and also uh, facilitates a coordinated approach to addressing these kind of data breaches. So, uh, it is very important here to uh, note that uh, certain plays a crucial role in incident response and coordination, but the ultimate uh, responsibility for data breach prevention and mitigation lies with the affected organizations, right? Because they have to keep a check on updating their uh, technology, they have to uh, put certain uh, security checks, correct? So, certain cannot, certain can only, it is only uh, an incident response, it plays only an incident response role. So, certain provides support, guidance and coordination, but organizations must implement appropriate security measures, incident response plans and also compliance with relevant cyber security regulations to safeguard their data effectively. Now, what is this national cyber security strategy? It is a draft put to public consultation in December 2019 and it is still awaiting finalization. So, uh, India lacks a national cyber uh, security strategy 
Also, India does not have any data protection law requiring breach notifications to impacted users. So, even the proposed draft digital personal data protection bill 2022 being mooted by uh, Ministry of Electronics and Technology would by notification exempt government entities from compliance. So, without any legal accountability repeated data breaches now occur within the same entity or platforms such as the Rail Yatri portal that has reportedly been breached in 2020, 2022 and 2023. So, what exactly is this national cyber security strategy? So, the national cyber security strategy was conceptualized by data security council of India. So, it is yet to be implemented. Now, what is exactly the need for a for this kind of strategy? One is increasing number of cyber attacks, right? In the recent times, cyber attacks have been increasing. So, the first one is increasing number of cyber attacks, the next one is cyber warfare offensives. Um, now the countries which are believed to have the most developed cyber warfare capabilities are the US, China, Israel. Uh, Russia and United Kingdom. So, the US is just one of the many countries that have invested significant amounts of money in developing not just defenses against attack, but the ability to mount damaging cyber um, uh, of warfare offensives. The next one is increased digital usage. Nowadays, people have started to uh, use digital uh, platform very frequently or in their day to day lives. So, critical infrastructure is getting digitized in a very, very fast way. Next one is for protecting the uh, very critical sectors. So, um, this is where certain comes in to play. Now, it is uh, very significant given the increasing interconnectedness of sectors and the proliferation of entry points into the internet, which could further grow with the adoption of 5G, right. Now, the recent also the recent cyber attacks, the, um, there has been steep rise in the use of resources like malware by a Chinese group called Red Echo to target a large swath of India's power sector. Then it used a malware called Shadow Pad. Then Chinese hacker group called um, Stone Panda. So, these kind of cyber attacks are going on recently, have been uh, found recently because of which such national cyber security strategy has to come in place. Now, for individuals, for government and for businesses separately, this kind of strategy has to be in place. Now, what are the government initiatives for uh, cyber security? So, one first is cyber surakshit bharat initiative. 
I am not going into the details of the initiatives, this is for you to go back and check on the initiatives which will help in your prelims. Then is Cyber Swachhata Kendra. Next is Online Cyber Crime. reporting portal next one is i4c that is indian cyber crime coordination center next is national critical information infrastructure protection center what is this? National Critical Information in Infrastructure Protection Center. And the last one is Information Technology Act 2000. So, these are uh, some of the present government initiatives for cyber security. Now, what is the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill? So, uh, this bill will apply to the processing of digital personal data within India, where uh, such data is collected online or collected offline and is digitized. Uh, it will also apply to such processing outside India if it is for offering goods or services or profiling individuals in India. Now, under this bill, uh, personal data may be processed only for a lawful purpose for which an individual has given consent and consent may be deemed in certain cases. Uh, again, under this bill, data fiduciaries will be obligated to maintain the accuracy of data, keep data secure and delete data once it is once its purpose has been met. So, this bill also grants uh, certain rights to individuals including the right to obtain information, seek correction and ensure and uh, ensure grievance redressal. So, the central government may exempt government agencies from the applications of uh, provisions of the bill in the interest of specified grounds such as security of the state, public order and prevention of offences. Now, this particular thing is the one that is under controversy and debate. Why the government agencies will be exempt that is the debate going on. But the central government says that this is in the interest of specified grounds such as security of the state, public order and pre prevention of offences. The central government under this bill will establish the data protection board of India to adju adjudicate non-compliance with the provisions of the bill. Next is what is the digital public uh, infrastructure which has become a tool of geopolitical advocacy for the union government to coincide with the G20 summit. Recently in the G20 summit, uh, MITE was organizing a two day global DPI summit. So, uh, what exactly is the digital public infrastructure? So, in the context of India, what exactly is digital public infrastructure? Now, it refers to the framework of technological systems and services established by the government to enable digital connectivity, secure communication and the delivery of various digital services to citizens. Now, some key components of this uh, India's uh, digital public infrastructure are one is Aadhaar, next is the UPI, then the GST network, next one is the uh, national knowledge network, digi locker 
and there are some more too but these are some of the key components so and uh, here something called india stack is mentioned so however the dpi framework is much more than upi as is clear from the public pronouncements by union ministers and the composition of what is termed as india stack so what exactly is india stack it includes for identification the coercive biometric system aadhar the contract tracing application arogya setu our vaccination process implemented through the covin platform and amazon style marketplace for government procurement through government e marketplace and an attempt to break market concentration in digital markets by the open network for digital commerce so what exactly is india stack it is the name used to describe a collection of disparate uh, technology products and frameworks now the components of this collection are owned and maintained by different agencies for example the aadhar products such as e auth and uh, e kyc are owned by the uh, unique id authority of india e sign is a technology specification which is maintained by the ministry of communications and information technology again digi locker is uh, owned by the uh, mit upi is owned by npci so on and so forth so digi what is india stack it is uh, basically collection of disparate technology products and frameworks now the three common features of these platforms merit deeper examination they emerge from their claim of being public because they are public digital public infrastructure so what are those uh, common features the first is the weak governance process which put into question whether they have been created with a legislative mandate except for aadhar none of these platforms has a legal definition of their functions roles and responsibilities from an act of parliament so except for only there is uh, in existence the aadhar act other than that none of them has uh, have a legal de definition of their functions so many are developed as joint ventures or special purpose vehicles that avoid accountability mechanisms such as audits by the cag or transfer uh, transparency mandates under the right to information act quite often it has been reason that this is with the intention to ensure efficiency in technical development but what is happening the data is being breached personal data breach is happening correct data leaks are happening so we all know about the glitches and exclusion errors of aadhar the complete failure of aarogya setu to prevent covid infections or the recent tender to overhaul the gem platform after complaints from suppliers hence the claim of expertise in the creation to dpi the creation of dpi to provide citizen services is inconsistent as per evidence because on one uh, side on one hand they say that we are doing this to uh, enhance the uh, services that are being provided but on the other hand data is being leaked the citizens are at uh, uh, are exposed are considered vulnerable here so the third common aspect of all such platform is them being data guzzlers what data guzzlers mean uh, meaning they are collecting n number of data that go beyond the technical uh, requirements so this only results in multiple individual and social harms including data breaches now what can the indian government do to prevent data breaches both personal and public so we'll have a look at that first is enact and enforce comprehensive data protection legislation now what can the indian government do uh, it can expedite the passage and implementation of the date personal data protection bill to establish a robust legal framework for the protection of personal data next is strengthen cyber security regulations 
so the government can enhance uh, existing cyber security regulations and standards uh, to ensure organizations across sectors uh, that they implement adequate security uh, measures next one is uh, promote uh, cyber security awareness and education now the government can invest in cyber security awareness campaigns to educate individuals businesses and government employees about best practices in data protection safe online behavior and recognizing potential threats such as phishing attacks and malware next one is establish a dedicated cyber security agency so the government can uh, establish a centralized agency that is responsible for cyber security at the national level already there is a uh, certain in place but it could also establish a uh, certain more agency so that the workload is shared correct uh, collab next is collaborate with private uh, sector and international partners so the government can foster partnerships with uh, private sector organizations academia and international entities to share best practices um, threat intelligence and also technological advancements um, that is happening in cyber security next one is uh, strengthen critical infrastructure protection so the government can focus on securing the critical infrastructure sectors such as energy transportation finance and healthcare by implementing robust cyber security measures next is encourage cyber security research and development so the government can also support research and development efforts in the field of cyber security and this will foster innovation and uh, promote the development of indigenous cyber security solutions and the last one is regularly update and audit government it systems so the government should ensure regular updates and security audits uh, of its own it systems and networks uh, in order to protect the public data so this includes uh, robust access controls encryption intrusion detection systems and regular patching of software software vulnerabilities so uh, uh, preventing data breaches requires a very uh, it is it, in, it requires multi stakeholder approach which will involve the government industry individuals and many more so uh, collaboration awareness and ongoing efforts to stay ahead of evolving cyber threats are essential in safeguarding data and uh, also ensuring a secure digital ecosystem in india so before winding up i will again uh, post a main question for you to uh, practice so here's the question <clears throat> india's digital public infrastructure plays a crucial role in enabling digital services but also poses security risks analyze the challenges and measures required to ensure the security of india's digital infrastructure and protect against cyber threats now this answer can be uh, sorry this question can be answered using the points that i mentioned previously so i can write this answer in around 250 words so that's all for today folks um i hope you like the video and thank you for watching the answer to the question will be uh, given on our telegram channel so and the link to our channel is provided in the description box in order to stay updated and for more such videos uh, please subscribe and stay tuned till then take care and bye bye